Finally, in this section, we will review raster and vector conversions and uh, talk a little bit about geospatial formats. So we have uh, become familiar with vector and raster data models and very often uh, when doing geospatial analysis, we need to convert between these two data models. Vector to raster conversion uh, for continuous data can be pretty complicated and involves spatial interpolation. So we will devote a special one or two lectures to this topic. For discrete data, vector to raster conversion is relatively simple and the values of selected attribute are just assigned to the cells uh, through which the uh, line vector line is passing as in this example or for areas uh, the the value that is associated with certain polygon is uh, is then associated to the grid cells that are located within this polygon one thing to remember when converting um, the uh, vector polygons is that the value uh, is associated with the entire area, entire polygon. So if you have things like this where the polygon is cut off, you can't just assign those values because, for example, if you have number of people living in that area and you wanted to compute the density, per square kilometer, your numbers will be wrong because you're, you are not working with the complete polygon. So you just need to be careful about that. Then for raster to vector data conversions, for continuous data, uh, that conversion is, uh, uh, is relatively simple. We can, for example, sample the continuous surface and represent it as points or we can de derive isolines, very common task, and transform raster to vector representation. Then raster to vector data conversions for discrete data is again a relatively simple task. Uh, with points, the, the points are just associated uh, with center of grid cell. The, for the lines, the, uh, the, resulting, the resulting vector line will just connect the, the center, centers of grid cells. However, for lines, thinning and smoothing is often performed for lines to create a clean vector representation. And here is an example of conversion between raster areas to raster polygons. Uh, when converting uh, data at relatively low resolution, you will have some effects of the, um, of the grid cells uh, geometry. Uh, however, that can be smoothed out using different smoothing algorithms for lines. So the data, uh, so we now have raster and vector data we can convert with, uh, between them, uh, but we need to be also aware that the raster, uh, raster model and vector model can come in different data formats, uh, which is dependent very much on the software uh, specifications. So for example, GIS, each GIS software has its own internal uh, raster format and also it usually has, a, uh, has um, its own ASCII um, data exchange, raster data exchange format. So we will be working with our grid and grass formats. You may need also surface raster formats. Then imagery has, uh, has a number of different formats, uh, formats from uh, GeoTIFF, which is very common, but many other ones as well. 
uh, and these are uh, these uh, include georeferencing information. Then there is number of graphics forma formats for graphics imagery that that you may need to work with. Those are not georeferenced, and then there are relatively general formats. Uh, which allow to store both raster and vector data, and that's HDF and NetCDF. Then for vector data, probably the most common is shape, uh, shape file, the most popular developed by Esri. But there are many, many other ones. KML is another one. Now, because we have so many, uh, so many formats, uh, we need to have some tools to convert between these uh, between these uh, formats, uh, so that the software, so that we can exchange the uh, data between different software packages. And uh, over the past about five years, geospatial data abstraction library has evolved as a leading tool uh, for interoperability first between the open source software but now we are seeing it is being increasingly used also by proprietary uh, software su such as ArcGIS, Google Earth, um, Airdas and some other and some other software that is using this uh, this library to convert between different uh, different formats and the idea is very similar as for the projection conversions uh, where you, you have a given format and you, all that you need is conversion to this single abstract model. That's why it is called data abstraction library. And then, uh, then you need from single abstract model to the new format. So you don't need to cover every possibility between two existing formats, which would be a huge number of conversion programs. You, for each format, you really just need to have these two. And uh, uh, so, so GRASS, for example, that we will use, also is using this uh, data abstraction library for import of data in different formats. And uh, uh, finally, we need to talk about data repositories. For example, for your project, you may need to get some data from the, uh, from the internet. Uh, these data repositories, many are very mature and provide very reliable data. You always get, uh, if it is a government official website, you, al you also get metadata. So always look at this metadata so that you understand the kind of data that you are getting. And uh, uh, I have a list of some of these uh, repositories uh, uh, on this website, but I'm sure that you are familiar uh, with many of them from your previous courses. So during this lecture, we have uh, uh, we have become familiar or recalled briefly recalled the uh, different mapping technologies. Then we went through a brief overview of coordinate issues related to coordinate systems and coordinate system transformations. And I would like you to read this online document. Uh, uh, that provides with more details a very nice description about this topic. Then we described the basic data models that we use for uh, that we use in GIS. Uh, we <clears throat> described the uh, possible conversions and uh, some of the geospatial mentioned some of the geospatial data formats. So our next lecture will be on display and data display and visualization.